thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I know it was a challenge to get here, um, but welcome. This service is going to be a little different than what we normally are used to in the liturgy. We will actually begin the service with a gospel reading. The gospel reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. He continued teaching, watch out for the religious scholars, they love to walk around in academic gowns, preening in the radiance of public flattery, basking in prominent positions, sitting at the head table at every church function, and all the time they are exploiting the weak and the helpless. The longer their prayers, the worse they get, but they'll pay for it in the end. Sitting across from the offering box, he observed how the crowd tossed money in for the collection. Many of the rich were making large contributions. One poor widow came up and put in two small coins, a measly two cents. Jesus called his disciples over and said, The truth is that this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. All the others gave but they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. This gospel story is the story of a woman who had so little, only these little widow's mites. It was very little to give, and yet she gave all she had. On Remembrance Day, when we think about this woman, we remember those who have given all in war those who went to war, those who were left behind, those whose lives were turned upside down, those children who lost their childhoods, those children who are now being forced to be warriors themselves. War affects all of us, even the most innocent among us, children. In hearing the story of this woman, we remember those who sacrificed all they had and those who are still being forced to give their all.
long to mend our ways. We long to end the pain and suffering caused by war. We know God's grace flows towards us. Let us re reach out towards God. Let us be a channel for God's grace. Bring it to all who suffer. Let us be that sanctuary. Amen. soldier is a child. In the tattered remnants of a military uniform with dozens more children behind him, as you stare at him, you picture yourself in a flash, age 10, playing war games in the woods. <coughs> For a split second, you are transported to the world of childhood, with its make-believe, its wonder, its potential. And in that split second, you must decide your own fate, the fate of the villagers under your protection and of these children in front of you. Do you treat this person aiming his weapon at you as a soldier or a child? 
you do nothing, dozens will be slaughtered, and you put your own life at risk. If you fire to frighten or disarm, you begin a doomed and bloody shootout. Fire back to kill as you would at an adult, and you save a village, but at what cost? My name is Helena Hall Kovitz. It is September 11th, 2001, and I am in my 7th grade science class in middle school. We are 15 minutes into a lesson on ecosystems when we hear a deafening boom, and we're all looking at each other in a panic, and we rush to the window, and we can't see anything because our window is facing the opposite side. The teacher said, loud noises happen in New York all the time. Everyone sit down, the next person that goes to the window gets detention. So a few minutes later, another teacher knocks on our classroom door, and she calls our teacher into the hallway, and he comes back pale, and he says, they bombed the World Trade Center. We're evacuating to the cafeteria. Nobody stopped at their lockers, leave everything where it is. Parents are now rushing the building, saying a second plane has hit. Within two minutes, the bomb squad rushes the building and says, we're evacuating in five minutes. So my neighbor Anne and her son Charles take me home, and we leave the building and stand here on the corner of Warren and West Streets, and we look up at the World Trade Center two blocks away, and we see that both buildings are on fire. We look up, and there are two gaping holes in the buildings. There are what looks like pieces of debris falling off the sides of the building. We start to see that it is actually people who are literally falling off the sides of the buildings, and there are people running already, and there are all sorts of metal parts scattered along the highway. I'm thinking I have to get home. I'd always been a really anxious, scared child. Like I could not watch scary movies, I could not read scary books, I could not go on rides. I think at this point, I realized that this time it really did happen. The what if happened. The horror movie thing did happen. Anne is leading the way and Charles is behind her and I'm holding Charles's hand and I'm getting jostled around pretty badly. It's nearly impossible to move through. That's when I start to panic. I just hear sporadic screaming coming from every direction and people screaming, they're jumping, they're jumping. That's a woman, that's a man. And we're hearing the thuds of bodies hitting cars around us. And Anne screams, don't look kids, look away. Charles keeps saying we're going to die, we're going to die. Dust is everywhere, it is burning our eyes, burning our noses. The smell is absolutely awful. It smells like rotting meat. We see that buried underneath the dust are shoes and purses and lunch boxes and wallets. There's a 40 year old man in a business suit, running and screaming and crying along with this group of children that must have been evacuated from another school nearby. The look of panic and absolute fear on the faces of these adults who are now acting and reacting like children. I have accepted that I am going to die without seeing my parents again and possibly watch Anne and Charles suffer and go first. I am worried at this point that there are going to be people showing up and throwing us in trains and taking us to camps. That is kind of the first place my mind goes because all I knew of war and bombings and things like that is what I learned about World War II. War destroys lives. It affects us all. The effects of a war last a lifetime, a generation, forever. Men, women, children, and families are forever changed by the horrors of war. Today, children are living the realities of war all around the world. They live in war zones, experiencing what Helena experienced every day. Children are being forced into becoming warriors, forced to carry guns, forced to kill. Today we not only remember those who fought in wars, those who fought on the side of peace and justice, but we must remember those sometimes forgotten casualties, the children. Today we remember that we are called by God to bring about peace and justice in the world. We are called to stand in solidarity with those who would create a better life, a more just life for all, and especially the children. As the woman in the gospel gave her all, too many have sacrificed their all. We are called to bring the hope, hope for a better world. Let, us, let this not only be a day to remember, but also a day that we leave here saying never again. Never again will families be torn apart, will children be soldiers, will loved ones die in combat. Let us work towards that never again becoming a reality for all. Amen.
offered all they have. We know that peace will not come from the barrel of a gun, but rather from the depths of our hearts. Accept these humble offerings that they may be used to bring about your kingdom of peace and justice. Uh.
But the day will come when those weapons of war will be turned into tools of peace. We go up toward, towards that day when no longer will the gentle, vulnerable souls of children of anyone be sacrificed to the selfish madness of human greed and power seeking. Let this day be a day of remembrance and a day of vision and hope for the future for each one of us. Amen. Imagine by John Lennon. Beautiful. Oh, 